Hello everyone, it's me again, once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on the various modes of radio wave propagation. This video, part 3 series, I'm going to focus also on the sky wave. I have done the definition of sky wave on the part 2 series discussion on the different modes of radio wave propagation. For this video, the objective is to understand the critical frequency critical angle, skip distance, and skip zone of the sky wave. So the objective is to define what are all these four parameters which is related to the sky wave. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, thanks ahead for your strong support. Thanks, guys. This is what I have mentioned earlier on on the part 2 series discussion on the various modes of radio wave propagation. Sky wave propagation. The ability of the atmosphere to return a radio signal to the Earth depend on the atmosphere reflection property. This is heavily discussed on the part 2 series. How can a sky wave actually return back to the Earth? It actually depend on the atmosphere reflection property. Today, this video, I'm going to further discuss on the reflection of the radio wave. Not only depend on the ionization density, it also depends on the frequency of the radio wave and also the angle of the transmission. So besides definitely on the atmosphere reflection property, we also depends on radio frequency and also the angle of the transmission. So these two important parameters also determine how can a radio wave like a sky wave actually can be reflected back to the earth. So this is what I'm going to emphasize for this video. Before I start on any discussion, firstly, let's define what is critical frequency. Okay, the critical frequency for sky wave propagation. The highest frequency of the radio wave when transmit vertically and such that the radio wave will be reflect sufficient to turn back to the earth is called the critical frequency. Okay, which means that the highest frequency that they will actually still land back to the earth. Okay, this is what is called the critical frequency. So from this diagram, you can see that Okay, the higher the frequency, there will be a chance that the radio wave will not be able to return back to the Earth. The highest frequency that will enable the radio wave to return back to the Earth is what we call the critical frequency. Lower frequency signals are more easily reflect back as compared to higher frequency signals. So from here, you can see that the lower frequency, the chances for them to reflect back in fact, it's much, much higher as compared to the higher frequency. So you can see that for the lower frequency, you can see that they actually don't really need to penetrate deep into the ionosphere and basically they will be able to reflect back to the Earth. The higher the frequency, you can actually see that it actually need to penetrate deep into the ionosphere before it actually reflected back to the Earth. High frequency radio wave will travel further up into the ionosphere and it reflected back, the distance cover will be longer. So this is actually what I have described to you earlier on. The higher the frequency, okay, they actually penetrate deeper into the atmosphere, and this actually results in a longer distance. So depend on where you are or where you want to send your signal, the further away, then you can consider to use a higher frequency to land into the receiver zone. If the frequency is sufficient high, the wave will penetrate all layers of the atmosphere and continue up to space. So this is mainly for satellite communication. So basically, if the frequency is high enough, they basically penetrate through the atmosphere and basically communicate to the satellite. So this is what it means. Critical frequency depend on the ionized density and therefore varies with the time of the day. Different time of the day, okay, the ionization density actually varies. And because of this, the critical frequency actually also change depending on the different times of the day. So this is the critical frequency. Okay, a diagram always speaks 
a million word. Okay, so you can see from here. Okay, so for example, I have the same angle. Okay, so let's neglect away what is angle first. So just for example, I have the same angle, which means that I launch the radio wave at the same angle, but at different frequency. You can see that this typically is a lower frequency. And when my frequency actually increase, they penetrate deeper into the inner sphere and also will be reflected back to the earth. But if I continue to increase my frequency, okay, this may be the outcome. They may be able to penetrate through the whole piece of inner sphere and never come back to the earth. So this is mainly for satellite communication. So this is what we understand on a critical frequency. The highest frequency that I can guarantee that it will be still reflected back to the earth. So this is what we call the critical frequency. So from here, you can see that frequency is definitely the highest. Okay. C is higher than B, B is higher than A. A is the lowest frequency. So like what I mentioned early on, the lower the frequency, the better chances of that to reflect back to the earth. Okay, so this is critical frequency. Next, we are going to understand on critical angle. The least angle from the vertical direction at which a radio wave of a specific frequency can be propagated and still be reflected from the atmosphere is called the critical angle at that particular frequency. Okay, so this is okay. Remember, I still remember this is what we play. Uh, Angry Bird. Can you still remember the Angry Bird games that we play? We projected a stone and then try to hit an object. Okay, so basically. These are all the different angles okay, that we actually projected to hit the angry bird position here. So this is what we understand on a critical angle. So just imagine if I want to throw a stone further away, I will project, let's say, about 45 degrees, and then I throw the stone, so it will be able to land a longer distance. Imagine if I throw almost 90 degrees up, okay, you can imagine that the stone is going to go all the way up and basically will land somewhere near me. Okay, so this is what you mean by critical angle. The angle that you actually launch to throw the stone, for example. Okay, so this is the definition here. The angle of radiation is important in determining whether a particular frequency will be returned to Earth by reflection from the atmosphere. Okay, earlier on, I told you that the higher the frequency, okay, they actually can go for a longer distance. So now, beside controlling the frequency, I also controlling the launch of the critical angle, okay, so that the electromagnetic wave will be able to return back to the Earth. For each frequency, there is a critical angle. If a signal of this frequency is spin at a smaller angle than the critical angle, then reflection will not occur. Okay, so this is a definition. In order to ensure the electromagnetic wave actually 100% come back to the Earth. Okay, beside the frequency, we also need to take care of the critical angle. Okay, so now, again, let me use this figure to describe what I want to mention. Okay, so these are all the different angle. Let's say we are using the same frequency, okay, but also at different angle. Okay, you can see from here, okay, they basically will land at different position. Okay, beside increasing the frequency, okay, they basically can actually go for a longer distance. Okay, the angle of you launch this electromagnetic wave is also critical. So this is what we understand what is on the critical angle of the sky wave propagation. In short, for sky wave propagation, not only the so-called the density of the ionosphere be also the critical frequency and also critical angle. So in short, these three parameters are key to determine whether the sky wave propagation can be a resultant, okay, which means that how or whether the electromagnetic wave can be reflected back to the Earth actually depends on these three critical parameters. One, the density of the atmosphere, critical frequency, and last but not least, on the critical angle. Next, let's understand on skip distance and also the bright zone. Okay, the skip distance is the minimum distance from the transmitter when the signal is at the critical angle to where the sky wave can be returned to Earth. Okay, the maximum skip distance occurs when the signal leaves the Earth at a tangent and is restricted by the curved 
of the earth. That is a theoretical limit as terrain will be affect actual distance. Okay, so this is a skip distance. Let's go to the blind zone first. Also called a skip zone, the area which is outside the coverage area of either the ground wave or normal atmospheric sky wave. If a radio receiver is located in the blind zone, it will receive no signal or very weak signal. Again, let's look at this diagram in order to understand this. Okay, so this is the two definitions I have mentioned early on, the skip distance and also the skip zone. Okay, the skip distance is basically the distance, the minimum distance that the sky wave need to have. For example, for this case here, this is the minimum distance. Okay, for example, I have a critical frequency, a critical launch angle. I throw the stone. Can you imagine this? This thing finally come back and land onto the earth. Okay, so this is what we call the skip distance. Okay, which means that this part is not covered by the sky wave. Can you understand what I want to say? This area is not covered by any of the sky wave. So what is skip zone? Okay, over here, okay, if you still remember on the part one series, I have also mentioned on the surface wave. Okay, surface wave can cover relative shorter distance as compared to sky wave. So this part is in fact still served by the surface wave coverage. And after that, it will not have any coverage. So this is what we call skip zone which means that anything over here, they are actually not capable to receive any signal from the transmitter. If we want to reduce the skip zone, okay, we can consider to lower the frequency or also consider the angle of launching the throw. Can you imagine this? So this will actually minimize the skip zone. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. See you guys. Thanks again.